dude in the parking lot staring at me. I don't like that. It makes me paranoid. Okay, so here's the deal. Every Wednesday, Cage Cove locks down the uh, the loop, keep cars from riding on it. You can go ride your bike, hike, run, whatever on the loop without any traffic. There's tons of uh, little buildings to go check out. There's tons of uh, wildlife that you might see. It's a good time. So uh, that's what we're doing this morning. Ben, your kickstand's still down. The goal is to take Carla out and introduce her to e-bikes. I'd found a bike shop online that, you know, had these uh, Le, Mans, Le Mans Prologues. Now these are 26 pound e-bikes. Now they have a 250 watt motor and they'll go, supposedly go 40 to 70 miles on a charge. They'll push you plus over 20 miles an hour. Uh, now I, I take my bikes seriously. I have a uh, a good uh, a good stable of treks uh, sitting out in the garage, uh, and I, I love my bikes. So I went and, went and rented us some, you know, pretty nice bikes. So uh, here's a picture of the Le Mans, and I'll tell you what I think at the end here. So when we got to the John Oliver cabin, there are tons of people there. And there were people talking about there being a bear up the road. Now I told Carla, don't worry, there's plenty of opportunities to see some wildlife. We'll probably see a bear before we get done. We didn't. But, I think that bear cleaned, cleared out some people because we were able to get up to the cabin and it mostly just be Carla and me. Bear is up there. Trying to cross the road. That's what you want. Then you see it.
door. Yeah, most of the doors are this way. It's not a uh, bad porch view, huh? It's way up there. It is way up there, isn't it? Yeah. After visiting the John Oliver cabin, we hopped right back on our bikes and we head, headed back around the loop. We're heading out to the Cates Cove Methodist Church. Other than a brief stop to pick up my sunglasses, it was an awesome quick little ride. Got him. <laughs> it was nice to be able to pass people. How, how high do you have your little motor? It's hard to go. Okay. Cades Cove Methodist Church. It's probably one of my favorite of the churches or the buildings in, around Cades Cove, and not just because it's early on, although that helps. You get tired, you get cranky, whatever. Anyways, it's one of my favorite buildings on the whole trip. It's, I mean, it's just got a lot of uh, cool little features. You've got the got a nice clean graveyard in the back. If you go in, if you look up, you can see where the bell goes through. If you look down, you can see a metal plate where the they used to keep a uh, potbelly stove, keep the church warm in the winter. It's just got a lot of cool stuff. And again, for some reason, the crowds weren't inside. There, you see, behind you, you see where they used to have the uh, rope to the bell. After we passed the Methodist Church, we came up on the uh, Missionary Baptist Church. Now, I don't have anything against the Missionary Baptist Church, but the crowds were crazy. I kind of wanted to get ahead of them. I guess in a sense, I just wanted to ride my bicycle. I want to ride my bike. 
I want to ride my bicycle and want to ride it where I like. <laughs> Sunglasses off. Nah, I look cool in sunglasses. So we're over here at the Cage Cove Visitor Center, about I don't know, maybe two thirds away around the loop, halfway around. The, I have no clue. But it, uh, you see, you have all these uh, old buildings. <laughs> I'm like, hey, I know you. <laughs> yeah, here. This is a meal. Wow. Y'all been here before? No. No? Welcome to the mill. This is the only building that's in its original location for the visitor center. They brought in the other buildings like right. the cable. It was about a tenth of a mile over that Thank direction. You. You're welcome. Right. Y'all enjoy the rest of your day. Be safe. All right. There are grooves that cuts the corn and comes out that side. So in its heyday, they could do 150 pounds of corn an hour, which is quite a lot of cornmeal. Yeah. Um, they would tell the miller how they wanted it, whether they wanted it coarse, like this, which is almost like grits or worse, mm. or like more like corn flour, and it depends on the time of year. So in the winter, they could do that, but in the summer, there's so much humidity that it would ruin the, the grain, the corn mm. meal, before the week next week came when they were going to get some more. So they might have it really coarse. Cool. They would have to bring their shelled corn in, however much they wanted. And the miller would keep one eighth as his payment. Hmm. Hmm. And then if he needed something he didn't have, he had too much corn, he would just go to Maribel or Knoxville and trade it for coffee or sugar or something they couldn't produce here. Cool. So when, the, so when the water levels are high enough, y'all still? Yes. Now it looks like today we have another little problem besides the water, <laughs> but it wouldn't make any difference today because there's almost no water anyway. But yes, right. normally we're running it. Do you remember when you grind? Can you tell what you grind or what? No, because take a look at this building. Yeah. <laughs> um, they, were, they did do that until the 90s. Um, I remember buying some here. Because that's, that's what I, I remember but, coming as a kid. and I, uh, Yeah, they did. But then the FDA came in in the 90s went. <laughs> We're not doing this because there's too much additives and not the kind we want. Yeah. So now, what you see in a store, 
is from the mill and Pigeon Forge. Okay. Okay. And they have a sanitary facility. Cool. We do not. <laughs> Alright, so here's the water wheel that drives the mill. I did turn it on right. Hey, there it is. So here we have the water wheel that runs the mill. Water wheel runs the mill. Try to say that a couple of times. Kind of brings the water down this chute. And I've lost the wife again. Alright, let me go find it. That was kind of cool. Check out all these old buildings. Let's see how good this uh, camera ends up working. I think this one lens that just wants to put a little blur on me. Yep. Going so fast we couldn't see them. So the visitor center was pretty cool. So I had skipped it previous on previous trips, but this time you know, we went ahead and stopped. We got a water, got a uh, little mixed thing of nuts to snack on. But the coolest thing was that that meal. That was really awesome. I've never had been been in that meal. But what you need to pay attention to is the rest of this video. I'm carrying a uh, big old huge blanket on my back because they have a store in the middle of the loop where my wife can buy big old huge giant blankets for me to carry around for the rest of the trip. But uh, when we left, there's a little dirt road that goes out. It ends at, at a uh, dead end, so, yeah, sort of dead end, with a 4x4 four four only Parches, uh, Parches Cove Road, I think that's the name of it, that comes off of it that you can take down to the Tail of the Dragon. Now, it's a cool ride, but it was not the ride for the, for the bikes. But we did take the dirt road, and uh, we saw some cool stuff. Check this out. That's going to add several miles. I got this. I'm not scared. Yep, turkey. Check this big bad boy up. Check that boy out. Now that's a girl. That's a pretty turkey. Are you pointing your camera at it? Turkey. There's another one in the road. Look, look at the gobbler on the other side of the road, then. Oh, big old, a big old turkey. Look at his beard. Waddle, something. Run, little turkey. <laughs> Yeah, there's a cabin over here too. Hey, it's the Henry Whitehead place. Huh. Huh. They 
turn the... I can't reuse videos? No. But yeah. It's pretty cool, huh? So this is the main cabin. But what I thought was cool was Grandma's house here. Yeah, Grandma's house, you got kind of low bridge to get in. Is it Grandma's house or was it a food storage? It's got a, it's got a fireplace. Yeah, but it's not. I decided this was Grandma's house. Check out these fine steeds. Fine steeds. What's that? That's not the boy. Still a turkey. What are you gonna do? Get the good camera out. If I can. Okay, so I'll be honest, I'm not a great photographer, but I thought I got some decent shots of these turkeys. You know, check these guys out. That one's hiding. Peekaboo. I mean, they were just great birds, and they were everywhere. There were tons of them. Okay, so uh, how did you like those turkeys? <laughs> I thought they were pretty cool. I'm still not much of a photographer, but I thought I got some good shots. You know, put, put down in the comments and tell me they were good shots because, because, why not? But yeah, so, the, you know, we went down that and we saw the turkeys and they were pretty awesome. But then we, uh, we kind of continued on. And I didn't realize, but my battery, um, both the cameras that I was uh, actually filming with, the batteries were pretty dead. So uh, we didn't get a lot of footage and, and not a lot of talking, and we were getting kind of tired and kind of hungry too. So uh, not, a lot, not a lot there. And you'll see uh, exactly when my camera died. Yeah.
Uh, shed for shilling peas. Alright. I like this one. Nice little cabin. A little opening in the trees. Good yard. Just needs a dog on the porch. Woo! Yep, my camera died. And I'd had a good time though. But I guess it's time to, uh, to talk about the bike. These Le Mans Prologue bikes. Now, what you may or may not have realized is this is a $5,400 bike. It's not a cheap bike. Now, I, I have bikes. I, I know expensive bikes. I know cheap bikes. And it's not a cheap bike. And it rode pretty good. I mean, yeah, I mean it, it, it should. Um, but it didn't quite live up to uh, what my expectations. And I, and, and I don't know if it was the bike or the bike prep or what. So they're supposed to have, you know, 40 to 70 miles of range, uh, depending on, you know, how, how much you use it. Now, I kept mine on the minimum almost all day. I wanted to try an e-bike, but I don't really need an e-bike, so I, I kept on the minimum. It made the hills easier, and that was fun. Carla kept hers turned all the way up all day. She, she doesn't bike much. She was dropping me on the hills. Sounds good. I mean, 250 watts is actually a, a lot. It may not be if you're using it as a motorcycle, but if you're pedaling and you're throwing 250 watts on top of that, that's actually a pretty, pretty good clip. It's a 10 mile loop. My, my bike's battery died. That shouldn't have happened. I mean, I was doing almost all the pedaling. I almost, almost never turned up the, to, to get the juice. Now, Carlos went fine. So maybe it was just my bike wasn't charged up as well. Maybe not. Um, but it was pretty good. Uh, I, I can't say I'm a big fan of, of the fenders, but it's all right. You know, um, would I get it? Probably not that one for me. Although a 26 pound bike that has an electric motor is pretty nice. And especially for somebody who actually rides. If you, uh, if you don't actually ride, this is probably not the right bike for you. You know, this is pure pedal assist. There's no little You like that? Kind of hoping my mic's not working so it didn't record that. I mean, I have to redo all of this. But it's okay. Um, I don't know that'd buy it for me, but I might buy it for Carla if, because, uh, this is going to be in the category of, uh, e-bikes that you can ride pretty much everywhere. You know, some of these, uh, bikes that have a little more power and, uh, little thumb controls, um, they're, they're almost classified as motorcycles. So, uh, I don't want, I don't want a bike that would get me in trouble for riding it. And I think this would work for her. But I, I, I've i kind of got my, my little sentimental value on uh, my, my tracks. So I think I'll stay with my tracks. Anyways, thanks for watching.